Gentlemen, welcome back to another episode here at the Main Corps. For today's video, we're going to be focusing on the topic of testosterone. So if you are new here, consider subscribing. We cover three topics here. That is masculinity, health, and relationships. So as I said at the top, today's topic, and actually I'm going to do a series of videos here about uh, the topic of, of uh, testosterone and give you a little bit of an update about why this video is coming out, this series of videos is coming out. So um, the series will include uh, symptoms, which is what we'll go over today, uh, symptoms of low testosterone, uh, some benefits and uh, treatment modalities, uh, some misconceptions. So I'll try to post, you know, a couple of different videos along the way. If it's something that you've either done in the past, you've thought about, you've heard about it, something that you want to consider, um, you know, it's something that uh, that I've recently started to to look further into, and obviously started treatment around, which is why I'm bringing that information to you here today. But uh, you know, it's you know, hormones are 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 something that are kind of hard to understand unless you really you know dive in and um, and you know do a lot of reading and research around it, which which I certainly have done. Uh, I'm by no means an expert. I'm by no means a medical professional, but. You know, I think that there's enough information out there for any of us to actually equip ourselves uh, in in terms of you know what we want to accomplish and uh, how we want to maximize our health benefits, which is really you know the the core reason why I got into it uh, in the first place. But you know before before we jump into some of the symptoms and uh, some of the video, what uh, what I thought I would do is is kind of you know just briefly give you a, a bit of you know some some misconceptions or some general consensus, I guess, about uh, when you say that, you know, either you have low testosterone, you hear people who have low testosterone, uh, or, you know, people who take a lot of it or, or who, who, who get treatments for it. There's a lot of, you know, preconceptions or, or preconceived notions about who that person might be. You know, you, you typically picture somebody in their 50s or older, so older gentlemen, um, you know, the, the gray haired sort of older retired guy. Uh, you also on the flip side of it, you think of somebody who, who does injections or who, who's somebody who's like an athlete. So you, you typically think of them as being like your bodybuilder type, uh, your muscle bound, uh, ego driven, uh, you know, somebody who's like kind of a lunkhead, uh, just in it for, um, for an, in it for the bulk and the mass. You know, those both scenarios are are certainly possible and, and they're out there. I'm not going to say that they're not, but, you know, by and large, you know, I would say there's probably a lot more people, probably I would say 40 percent of the population of men out there probably have, you know, suboptimal levels of testosterone and, and they don't actually know it. Um, and so, you know, there's a fear around either the admission of it, going to talk to your doctor about it. Um, you know, and just really addressing the topic as it is, you know, as a man, it's, it's not something that we want to fully admit. It's not something that we're, we're super comfortable with, but, you know, hormones for really everybody, both men and women, but uh, testosterone specifically is so central to, you know, how we function, how we think, how our brains operate, how we recover, um, how we are mentally, how we are physically. Um, uh, and it, it, it's, it's really a, a guiding light for so many different things. It, it, it's, it, it encompasses and it touches so many things, uh, both physically and chemically for men, that you know, to ignore it is, is really a disservice to uh, your health and, and what you're capable of. But um, for me personally, I had been kicking, the, kicking around the idea of going in and having my levels checked. So, um, you know, if, if it's something that you want to do, first, you're going to have to have some sort of blood test. You're going to have to have your blood markers checked and make sure so that you can establish some sort of baseline. You know, if you're offer, if you're offered testosterone injections or creams or gels or tablets at the gym or because of somebody that you know, um, you don't really know if you need it or not. So or and you don't really know where you're starting from. So it's really important that you establish some sort of base so that you that way you know where you're at, how relative it is to somebody that is your age, and how far do you need to get to get to that kind of optimum range. So, um, you know, the optimum range for, I'm 36, 
So the optimum range for me is about, you know, between 900 and 1200. Anything above 1200 is really unnecessary. I think it does, uh, there is a, a range and I think it does matter what age you are. As a 36 year old man, I should be anywhere between 900 and 1200. So um, that's the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is get your blood checked. And um, you can have it done by, by, by a general practitioner. Uh, the problem with that, it, they're, not gonna, they're not gonna be really willing to go into depth and they're probably gonna try to talk you off the ledge about any kind of testosterone optimization therapy because it's much like when you talk to them about doing a diet, it's not something that they're well versed in. In fact, not very long ago, um, it was not considered, it was kind of considered like under underground or it was kind of off label for them to even prescribe anything or to talk to you about it, a general practitioner. Uh, who you wanna go see if you're gonna do this, if you're really considering doing this, is you wanna go see an endocrinologist, somebody who studies hormones, who, who specializes in it. Um, a general practitioner just kind of knows, think of all the patients that they see. They, they kind of need to have a base level understanding of a lot of different areas of the health, physically, mentally. So a general, a general practitioner, as it's stated, they kind of know a little bit about it, but they don't really, they're kind of like a mile wide and inch deep. Now they're, I'm not saying that they're not smart people. I'm just saying that they're not specialized in it. So, you know, if you're looking at hormones and you want to have your blood drawn, somebody who understands the markers that are on your blood test, somebody who can actually tell you what to look for, uh, rec make, uh, sound recommendations, an endocrinologist is going to be best. Um, that that's going to be you know your first your first stop is to is to go see somebody who's an actual endocrinologist. They've studied hormones. This is what they specialize in. So you'll have your blood you have your uh, your blood test done, and then you'll go through your markers. Now again, a normal range for me is anywhere between 900 and 1200. It can fluctuate throughout the day. It can fluctuate depend, dependent on the amount of stress that you have, the amount of physical uh, stress that you have, that could be exercise, um, that could be any kind of chemical stress that you have, uh, how good are you sleeping, um, how sexually active you are. It could be a genetic thing, which, you know, that's kind of where it came from for me. Um, I don't know how far back it goes, but you know, it's not uncommon for men in my family to have lower or suboptimal levels of testosterone. So again, my levels, an optimum level for me is 900 to 1200. After my very first blood test, I was four, I think it was like 436. So, um, you know, you get below 300 and I don't know some insurance carriers will actually uh, um, help out with your treatments. So look into that. Um, but after your blood test, uh, you want to see where your levels are at, and then uh, based on that level, you will, you'll be able to make recommendations, uh, or the person that you're working with, the, um, the, the specialist that you're working with, will be able to make recommendations. Now, the key to all of this is re hormone therapy, hormone replacement ther therapy, any kind of hormone adjustments that you're making, uh, it's not something that you can kind of dabble in and just think, okay, yeah, I can... I can do this for a little while and, and things, will, things will kind of level out or I'll just try it for a little bit. You know, hormones are, are very, very important to keep in balance. So if you're just kind of tipping your, or dipping your toe in the water and you're not really taking it seriously, it could actually have some pretty adverse side effects. Um, again, because hormones need to be in balance or they need to stay in balance. Um, if you're not paying attention to that and you're just kind of going at it blindly, um, not taking it serious, not fully committed to the process, you could end up with higher levels of estrogen, meaning you're, um, you know, th that's the hormone that, uh, that women have higher levels of. Uh, so you could be more emotional, you could develop breasts, um, you could have breast sensitivity, your nuts could shrink. I mean, there's some really adverse side effects. So, you know, uh, uh, a bit of a call out, if it's something that you're going to do, make a full commitment to it, not something that you can just kind of half-ass and do. This has to be a lifelong journey, something that you're fully committed to and that uh, you know you take very seriously. I, I, I can't state that enough. Has to be something that you take very seriously and that you stay committed to. Um, you know, the specialist that, you're, that you would potentially be working with, you know, you're gonna have to make sure that you guys get on a schedule and a plan that way. It's constantly being monitored on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, 
and um, you know something that you can and tweak and modify throughout uh, the course of your treatment. You know, if you start off, if I start off on treatment at 36, it's something that we're going to monitor, you know, potentially for the rest of my life or potentially for you know the next couple of decades. That's a commitment that I've made, and it's one that you kind of have to make. Um, so that's really where we're at. And again, I'll do a couple of other videos uh, about you know the the benefits of it, um, some misconceptions around it, uh, and you know a couple of other things that I think are, are very important. But, you know, if it's something that you're thinking about doing or that you, you physically uh, and, and mentally just don't feel as sharp as you've gotten older, maybe you've kind of declined in a few areas. For me personally, um, I have tried to eat my way around this. I've tried to sleep my way around this. I've tried to work out my way around this, you know, sprints, deadlifts, everything. I've tried to do everything that I could get my hands on to try and increase things naturally, increase my levels naturally. And, you know, there, was, there wasn't anything that I wouldn't try. So I've tried everything and I ended up going and, and doing the treatments because it was something that was a layer deeper. So genetically, something that I really couldn't have any uh, control over, I was just predisposed to it. So that's the scenario we're in. So uh, that's, that's how we're gonna deal with it. Nothing you can do about it, right? Gotta make the best of it. So uh, there's nothing to be ashamed of. Um, and, and I promise you that if it's something that you get into, I'm kind of in love with, you know, tracking things and, uh, you know, looking at all my markers and I kind of look at it as like a scoreboard. I'm in competition with myself, but um, you know, there's nothing to be ashamed of. And you're going to, you know, in the first two, three months that I've been doing it, I've seen such dramatic effect and, and such great benefits. And I'm only on the precipice of it. It's only going to get better you really only start to see benefits after about like three to six months. Uh, you will notice some right away. Every body is different. Some, you know, take to it right away. Some it takes a little bit longer, but uh, you know, you will notice benefits and I promise you that, uh, th that you will feel a lot better uh, from the very beginning and then it, it only progresses from there. So again, no shame in doing it. It's something that, you know, I know that if you fully commit to, that you will be incredibly grateful that you did. I certainly am, and that's why I'm sharing this information with you. So I'll quit blabbing and uh, I'll get into some of the symptoms. So what we'll do, I got a list of them over here and I thought I would just kind of go through some of the ones that, uh, that, you would, that you would normally experience or that men often experience uh, when they have suboptimal levels of testosterone. I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm guilty of, of experiencing each one of these. But uh, so that you have an idea, if you're thinking about it, or if you think you may have lower levels of testosterone and you match a lot of the criteria here, um, it's probably a good indicator that you do and you should go at least go have your blood uh, checked. So uh, that way you know, right? Got to establish a baseline, know where you're at. So again, symptoms of low testosterone, uh, lack of motivation and drive. So you know, I think that's fairly obvious. If you're just not feeling like you have enough, like as much pep or as much get up and go, as much drive. Um, my brother and I have, have started treatments within the last three months. Uh, for him, you know, he, mentally, he wanted to do things and he wanted to accomplish things, start new tasks, finish projects, start new projects. Mentally, he wanted to do those things, but physically his body just didn't have the get up and go like it used to. And I personally understand that as well. Um, you just don't have that, like, you know, that zest, like, that like you quite do. Um, all these things kind of happen as a decline slowly over time. It's not going to be instant, but if you've been experiencing them for a while, um, again, good indication that you could have lower levels, but a lack, lack of motivation and drive. Uh, I think that's fairly straightforward. You, you guys can pretty much surmise what that is. The next one is, uh, any kind of like training or performance, or uh, muscle strength, muscle decline. Uh, for me personally, uh, I go to the gym where I work out absolutely every single morning. It is a non-negotiable for me. Um, I have been that way really since I was uh, in diapers. I, I can't think of a time when it wasn't that way. But um, the thing is, is that especially over the last like three or four years, what I notice is that no matter how hard, how long, or how fast, how uh, massive, I guess, the lifts or the 
anything. It didn't matter what I did. I really wasn't putting on like any kind of bulk or any kind of like sustainable muscle uh, mass. Now I'm not trying to be huge. Uh, I don't really need to do that. You know, I don't really need to have that. Some may, uh, but you know, if you're, if you're obviously there's a reason why I'm going uh, and that's to stay in good shape. That's to, you know, maintain and, and build upon uh, good muscle strength. So if you're seeing a decline in that, or if you're cutting your workout short because you don't have the, the motivation or the drive, that's a pretty good indicator that maybe you have lower levels of testosterone. Um, you know, I just, I, I noticed that it didn't matter what I did in the gym, you know, I just wasn't seeing the mass. And that was really frustrating because, you know, I've spent years, literally probably years in the gym and to stay status quo is not something that, that I'm satisfied with. Um, that was frustrating for me and, and I think it probably is for a lot of guys. So um, muscle decline, muscle strength, training, performance, you get the drift. The next one is, is weight gain and belly fat specifically. I think every guy who's either trying to, you know, try, trying to like attain the six pack or who has experienced any kind of weight gain, where you first see it or where it's most pain in the ass to get rid of is that lower tire uh, at the, you know, at the very base. So like right, right above your waistline, that is like, that's where you get it first. And that is the shit that's like really hard to train off. And comes down to diet for sure, but uh, and training of course. But uh, it is it is the the like the real pain point for a lot of guys. It's it just seems like it won't come off. Um, no matter what you do, no matter what exercises, what your diet is, if it seems to never go away, never trim up, never uh, you know slim up, oh, and even on the on the flip side of it, you think it's kind of maybe growing or it's you know, you may have more that's coming on, uh, that's typically the sign of lower levels of testosterone. Um, it's supposed to keep your belly fat lower um, and it's supposed to burn fat uh, a lot faster for you. Um, and it's supposed to help out your muscles. So whenever you're working out your muscles, you're burning more fat and as a result of that, um, you, are, uh, you, should be, you should be losing fat. And specifically in that area, um, you know, you're also doing the, I do injections, but you're also doing the injections kind of in that same area too. So it's hitting that area first. And, um, you know, people with, with, with that are obese or people that, um, have weight problems, um, if they have lower levels of, of lower levels of testosterone, their estrogen levels are higher. So that's why they get, you know, they, they develop breasts and that's why they have more than just that tire. But, um, you know, they don't have a lot of muscle mass. So their estrogen levels are higher and it makes sense because, um, you know, you can see that they don't have a lot of muscle. They have more fat than they do muscle. Um, next one, constant fatigue. So this was a big one for me. Now, again, uh, I'm working out every day. I'm eating right. Uh, I'm getting proper sleep. I'm drinking enough water. I'm doing X, Y, and Z, crossing all the I's or crossing all the T's, dotting all the I's, literally doing everything. And I'm still experiencing, or I was still experiencing like constant fatigue. Couldn't figure out like, what, what is the problem? Why am I so tired all the time? I'm as fit as they come. I, you know, I do everything right. I train, I exercise, I sleep, everything. And I can't figure out what it is that's going wrong. And case in point, the fact that my, you know, levels of testosterone were low makes sense. So, you know, this is cutting my workout short. This is cutting my workday short. This is cutting my to-do list and my activities short. And, you know, I just can't, you know, I can't really afford to have that. Um, there's a lot that I want to accomplish and there's a lot that, you know, I know that you guys want to get done. So um, if you're feeling like you're crashing halfway through the day and you're doing everything right, it's time to get your blood work done. The next one, lack of focus and concentration. Uh, you could also tie in the last one here with with brain fog uh, this is more of the chemical side of things so if you are having issues with brain fog if you are having issues staying focused or concentrated for longer periods of time and you think that that's kind of fading away I bet that it's because of your levels because uh, I know that after I have my injections I get them once a week 
after I have my injections, literally within an hour, I feel like my, like there's a veil that's lifted and like I get a clean slate. My brain just kind of like opens up. It's very clear. It's very sharp. It's very in tune. Uh, I can feel it. I can really feel it. Um, you know, a lot of what uh, hormones are regulated by um, chemically is because of what's happening in the brain. It's all, it's kind of all regulated there. So if you have, if your levels are off, then it's conceivable that your brain's not option or functioning at its best because, you know, of your hormone levels. And again, they can change. It can be, they can be varied and, and, you know, they can be hard to track, but without any kind of knowledge or understanding of where you're at, you know, you're going to experience a number, if not all of these symptoms. And, you know, the, the lack of focus and concentration and brain fog, you know, and you're not having the energy or, or the, or the drive to get things done. You know, you can see how things are, are really starting to decline from an activity or a, a production standpoint. And as men, we need to be out there functioning. We have shit to do. We have, uh, you know, we have to produce, um, it's provide, uh, preside and, uh, protect. And if, if you don't have the energy or the zest or the, you know, the get out there and get it done, um, and you're not sharp on your feet, you know, you're not helping yourself and you're certainly not helping those around you. So the next one is going to be depression and anxiety. If you kind of feel like, you know, things are humdrum or, or like, you know, like the world's out to get you or, or think like you're kind of living underneath a little bit of a dark cloud. You know, I'm not going to lie. I've experienced that a little bit. Uh, where you just kind of feel like you're a little blue, like things could be better and, and you're just kind of in down in the doldrums a little bit. Um, you know, that's because of the fact that you have low levels. If you're kind of feeling kind of mopier, um, you know, not going to say that the depression on its own is, is, is in unrelated or it's not a problem on its own. But, you know, a big thing with the depression is if you go see one of the general practitioners that I mentioned before and you give him the, the list of um, symptoms that I just went through, you know, I, I'm feeling depressed. I'm always tired. Um, you know, I don't have as much get up and go. don't have as much motivation. A general practitioner, I would say 99.99% of the time is, as I said before, he's not going to instruct you to do any kind of investigation or tests on your hormone levels. He's probably going to, you know, provide you uh, an antidepressant. He's going to write you a script for like, you know, Prozac or Wellbutrin, which that's not only treating just a symptom, but that's also doing like horrible things for your sex drive, for your libido. Um, and I think that that facilitates even, even lower levels of motivation and um, energy. To me, I think that that's going the wrong way. And a general practitioner is likely going to give you an antidepressant when you tell them that you're depressed or that you're experiencing those things and you're telling them that you're anxious, um, that your mind is racing because it can't concentrate, it can't focus. Uh, a big part of that is, you know, the fact that your brain doesn't have the chemical uh, levels of, of, of hormones, testosterone, as it should. So he's going to give you Wellbutrin and you're going to go the wrong way. And it's because as a general practitioner, like I said before, he doesn't know the level deeper, which is that if you took care of the actual hormone levels, a lot of these things, if not all of them, go away. So you could get rid of the antidepressant. You could get rid of the, the, the cholesterol medication. You could get rid of, you know, the, the heart medication, um, potentially. I'm not going to say that that's all the time, but, you know, when, they're, when, when guys are going in there with two, three, four medications, and then they find out that what's causing all of those problems is their testosterone. Sometimes guys are able to get rid of all of those other medications because they're focused on the level that matters that's affecting everything, which is the uh, hormone levels. So something to be aware of if you're going to see a general practitioner for it. Um, he's, not gonna, he's not gonna push the testosterone very much. He's probably gonna be pushing a, um, uh, an antidepressant. To me, that's a bad way to go, but uh, next one is poor sleep. So big one, you know, if you're not if you're not giving your body enough um, rest and recovery time because you're stressed, because you're fatigued during the day, maybe you're taking a nap, you can start to see how these types of things kind of stack and create and facilitate uh, problems with the next one. So you know, if you're not getting good sleep because you're depressed, your mind's racing, you can't concentrate. 
um, you have brain fog, you're gaining weight, you know, it, yeah, again, it's kind of all one and the same. So poor sleep. And uh, the next one is going to be if you're more irritable or crabby. I experienced this one too. Uh, you're more moody. So I noticed that after I get my shots, which again are weekly, I noticed after I get mine that I'm a lot calmer, that I'm more copacetic, that, you know, it's a more all is well feeling. I feel more balanced. I feel more like I have like an equilibrium and uh, I just kind of feel like I'm more mellowed and chilled out. And it's, it's, it's difficult to, to describe that feeling, but it does, it does happen like almost within an hour of me getting that, uh, that weekly shot. So, you know, I just, I felt like the things that used to really, you know, irritate me or when I get real moody, I'd have like highs and lows, peaks and valleys. Um, and, and not to dis have any disrespect to women, but you know, women who have higher levels of estrogen, that's more common with estrogen. So you have like high levels, uh, or you have highs and lows, emotional kind of roller coasters. You know, we're up and down and up and down all throughout the day. You almost have like a mood disorder. But with this, it's more to keep you level, to keep, again, keep you balanced, keep you in check. Um, it's, it's just important that, that you know that um, that's not only what we're trying to achieve, but that's also what you'll feel um, and, you know, some of the results that, uh, that you'll experience. So uh, the last one was brain fog, which, which we kind of covered. But um, again, you know, something to, something to really consider. And if it's, you know, if you've thought about it, and uh, you want to go see somebody about it, I, I would highly recommend it. You know, I, I fought it for a little, a little while thinking I could, you know, take care of it myself. And I just had to get out of my own way. Part of it was my ego. And uh, there's nothing to be ashamed of. And um, I promise you, you're going to feel a lot better. Uh, so if you have any questions, please drop me an email. I'm at uh, themancoreproject at gmail.com. And again, I'll be doing a, a couple more series of, or a couple more videos in this series about testosterone. But uh, thank you very much for your time today and for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you again on a future video here at the main court. Take care. Be well.